All right, welcome back guys to Fitted Technologies. I'm really happy I can make another video, continuation of previous video that we just uploaded several hours ago in, in our channel. So if you haven't seen the video, uh, please check this one, the uh, Lucas Modeling T-Join Adhesive Bonding Composite. So in this video, it's a long video, one hour, two hour, because we were discussing about the T-Join and then how to do a mess transition near the crack tip, right? And at that modeling, uh, at this uh, modeling D join, we assume the beam is composed of uh, orthotropic elasticity, but we didn't use any failure criteria. We assume that the failure only happens at the debonding area, at the de uh, at the bonding area, right? So there's no failure criteria there, so we we cannot know uh, whether it, it fails or not. So to continue with this uh, video today, I'm going to explain about uh, modeling uh, a new, a new failure criteria just implemented in in, in Abacus 2021. I think it's a LARC 05 failure criteria. So it's a it's a very nice, uh, I'd say, failure model. It's a lot of improvement compared to the basic Hasid model. Right, because uh, in theory, in, in the original model, they can they can uh, predict uh, a better fracture of plane, fiber splitting, and fiber kinking. The one that cannot be predicted using the Hashin. And uh, to to save time, uh, we are going to use the same model as we as the model we developed uh, yesterday uh, in the previous video. So. Uh, in order to be able to join this video, I recommend you to check this video, the previous video, because we are going to use the same files. We just edit some some things, right? So, <clears throat> so yeah, this is important. Uh, first, I what I want to discuss is about von Mises stress, right? If you guys working with a von Mises, uh, if you guys working with a composite material, you should never use von Mises anymore to display your stress contour because those stress contour will not tell you anything right because von Mises is the scalar it's always positive so it didn't tell you either the composite will fail compression or tension it didn't tell you in which mode it will fail either it's a matrix cracking or a fiber breakage so it's useless to display a stress contour if a von Mises when you're simulating a composite material, so, yeah, so never use von Mises, right? You can tell directly if someone display a composite structure, they said they analyze orthotropic material, but then they show, uh, how to say, uh, von Mises stress, you can tell, oh, this guy do not understand what he's talking about, right? Because what's the point? For example, let me explain a little bit here. Uh, hopefully, uh, okay. It's a big, let me make it smaller. So imagine you have a composite, right? Uh, uh, I don't know what kind of composite. For example, uh, this is the fiber directions. Uh, we always say this is the first direction. Uh, this is the second direction, for example. Uh, and then you have this information, sigma 1, 1 max. The failure uh, in the fiber directions is 700 MP for example for example and then uh sigma 2 2 max is around 30 mpa for example and under shear sigma 1 2 max it fails around 40 mpa and then if someone says oh dito the maximum stress in your structure the von is a stress max is for example uh 300 MPA. So my question to you, is it fail? My co did my composite fail? You cannot decide, right? Because we never know. Is it tension or compression? Because one misses it as a scalar. It's always positive, like absolute value, right? And you don't know this 300 MPA in which direction. If you compare to the fiber direction, it is not failing because it's lower. But what about if you're comparing to sigma 2 2 max or sigma 1 2 max under shear or under transverse tension, it may already fail, right? So this number, the von Mises, it didn't tell you anything. So it's useless to, to present something, uh, for example, with the von Mises contour, 
on a composite uh, structures. That's useless, right? Yeah, so when you want to present your results, imagine you do a stress analysis, your, your structures is made of composite, and you have a materials data, what you need to do is first take any failure model. Take any failure model, okay? Any failure model that you can explain easily. For example, Hashin. And then you can you can you can plot criteria, any criteria, matrix compression, matrix tension, uh, failure in fiber compression, failure in fiber tension for each ply. You can plot this failure criteria. For example, this is if you have Hashin, they're like this, right? They have four four damage modes. So I think if you've seen my other videos about modeling composite, macro scale, meso scale, you, you already understand this. Okay, check my other videos about modeling composite using Hashin, right? You know this. This is something that you need to tell. So people understand, okay, we are closer to maybe matrix compression failure or we are closer to fiber compression failure because if the value reach uh, one larger than one it means fail okay if smaller than one it means it didn't fail yet it hasn't failed yet right so this is the contour plot that you want to see when someone's reporting a stress analysis on a composite structure you don't want to see the font is a stress why because it didn't tell anything right then what is the option second option the second option if you don't have or if you haven't agree with any failure criteria the best thing you can do plot stress in each direction okay just plot in each direction okay just plot sigma one one sigma two two sigma one two so people can can compare by themselves okay they can compare the sigma one one in your stress contour with the material strength in the fiber directions right this is at least this is the better way compared to putting a font miss a stress because the font miss a stress they don't have the positive negative and they don't tell anything about the direction of the loading right yeah so and don't also put uh, maximum principal stress. Yeah, you know, people in the past, they learned about principal stress. The, pr uh, the failure all always happened in the principal stress. That's always true, only true if you're working on isotropic material. When you're working with composite with the strong and isotropic, this direction means nothing. So you should not put stress. Uh, Maximum principal stress, maximum principal strain, it means nothing. The same thing like the, the von Mises, right? Yeah. So this is the first, this is the best way to take any failure model. For example, in Abacus, we have Hashin model and put all the criteria that they have. Matrix compression, matrix uh, tension, uh, fiber compression, uh, fiber tension, right? Or if you don't agree with any failure model, nobody knows. You can at least just put a stress direction in any in any components in in, in any direction. Sigma one one, sigma two two, sigma one three. So you have three plots, or if you want, you have six plots for each uh, stress direction. But you can all you can always assume uh, transversely isotropic, right? So you don't need to. Yeah, you, you understand what I mean. Okay. However, yeah, this is however. Some people, uh, Abacus is really limited in, in terms of this failure criteria. They only have machined uh, since, uh, I don't know, since I'm using, <laughs> since I'm using Abacus, since uh, the first time I'm using Abacus was back on, uh, back then, the 2009, I think. They only have Hashin, and this Hashin did not develop at all, I think. They only, ha uh, they only can be used with a three, uh, plane stress I think with a plane stress element or a shell element okay so if you if you're for example if, if your structure is uh, is discretized with 3d solid elements then you cannot do anything the best way you can do is the the second option plot stress stresses on on, on various directions right so you only have a 2d plane stress Right, so if you model with three D solid, you cannot plot anything. However, yeah, 
this is a great improvement. Back in 2017, uh, Abacus implemented what they call, uh, how do you call it? Uh, LARC model, LARC05. The LARC uh, stands for Langley. It's a, it's a NASA laboratory, NASA Langley uh, Research Center, I think. Uh, and uh, uh, but it's not done by the NASA people, right? It's it's it was led by the uh, professor from uh, from Imperial College London, uh, Sylvester Pion, and he made a lot of publication. He he he, he proposed many uh, modeling uh, for composites uh, back then, even before uh, this was on 2012. I read a lot of his paper back in 2006 to. They discuss about fiber kinking, I think, and then in in 2012, based on the outcome of uh, maybe you you, ha you haven't heard it, WWFE. So it's a worldwide failure exercise. So the idea of uh, let me tell you a little bit. The idea of worldwide failure exercise is that uh, there is one team. I just call it one team. Uh, they have uh, material data, basic material data. For example, 90, 0, plus minus 45. And then they invite everyone that already, uh, that uh, propose any model in this world. Uh, like big model, right? Like Hashid model, Christensen model, many men model, right? Uh, Pook model, Sherman Pook model. And they ask them to make a blind prediction of, of the test case that, that this team ask, right? If you think you're great, if you think your model is great, this is the basic data. Let's predict uh, the behavior of this test. And yeah, many, many people, I think around uh, 15 or maybe more, they try to blindly predict the outcome of the experiment based on the given data, based on the given test data. And yeah, based on that publication, this uh, Sylvester Pino, uh, the team that he lead uh, try to make a better model. Yeah, so uh, basically they call it this what we call LARC05, the one that is implemented in Abacus. There is LARC02, 03, 04. This is the I think one of the most updated one, if I'm not mistaken. So the model is like this. I, I check it in the Abacus documentation in the news documentation. So. It works in Abacus standard only at the moment. Yeah, but that's good. That's good enough. It's for 3D. So, and 2D also. It can be used for 2D. But the formulation of the LARC itself is in 3D. So it used six stress components. So it can be used for solid elements. So it's used for uh, polymer matrix composite, of course. Uh, it's quite similar with Hashin criterion. So it's a failure criterion, all right? So when when your stress combination reaches a certain threshold, certain criteria, it fails, okay? And then they consider for damage initiation. It's the same number of damage initiation like Hashin, but they're slightly different. In Hashin, you have matrix compression, matrix tension, fiber compression, fiber tension. But here, that's not how they, how call it? Uh, they uh, distinguish that. They have a matrix cracking, either it's tension or compression, it's a fiber kinking, it's under compression, and it's a fiber splitting, right? It's fiber splitting, it's like, you know, it's like matrix uh, matrix uh, tension too, right? But it's, it's different. You have a combination between the force, we'll discuss later, okay? And then you have a fiber tension, fiber breakage, okay? So the matrix cracking is something like this. So FM crack, so the idea is that uh, you have the sigma n, sigma tau l. This is shear, shear, sigma n. But now you have a question: What's the meaning of t, Dito? So, so for example, uh, you have a crack here. If you pull it like this, uh, this is ninety degree uh, fiber here. So the idea of this one is that the one that uh, uh, that makes the crack is not uh, sigma two two but the one that is perpendicular to the cracking plane. So here there is an angle. So the sigma n is basically sigma 2, 2 that is transformed to the angle alpha. So basically there is a alpha, 
Yeah, so so it's not directly like sigma two two, but they need to do transformation first. So it's like maximum principal stress, but only in the sigma two two and sigma three three direction. So if if this is two, this is three. Yeah. So it's quite similar concept like uh yes, uh, like a maximum principal stress, but only in this direction. Okay, and the idea is that uh, you need to find alpha. Uh, the value of alpha is found numerically that is maximized this fm crack so they they, they try to make a how you call it a transformation of stresses that maximize this value so when it reach one that fails okay so and this, the the important thing here I, I think one of the most important two is that the threshold for the shear is this one in hashin you compare in sigma one two with the sigma one two max directly. Here they have this term n l uh, sigma n. What is that? So this is what we call uh, a pressure dependency. Uh, if you check my other video on polymers, we know that the yield strength of a polymers is pressure dependent. So the same thing here. For example, if if I pull like this. But at the same time, I press this. Okay, or or for example, if I shear like this. Okay. While at the same time I'm pressing like this, hydrostatic compression, then my composite will be more difficult to fail. That's why uh, they 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 put like this. The same thing like this. Uh, for example. Imagine I have a plane like this, and then you have a block like this, right? And then the blocks should glide with the friction coefficient mu. Now my question is, how easy it is to glide? Imagine if I have a pressure sigma end, then it's going to be more difficult. The larger my normal stress, and the more difficult it will be uh, gliding. So the same thing here, the more difficult the crack will occur when you have high normal pressure, high pressure. So here they have this N2, NL is basically this friction coefficient. They call it friction coefficient. In my case, I'm from, from polymer guy, I call it pressure dependent parameters. Uh, the sigma N is the normal stress, which is the pressure itself, okay? So I think it's it's quite clear right here, and the angle alpha is the 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 the, the cracking plane. We call it a cracking plane, the plane that maximizes uh, the parameters of a matrix cracking. Okay. The fiber tension is quite similar with the Hashin. If you remember, check my other videos. Uh, com just comparing the sigma one one directly to a threshold. Uh, the the most interesting here is the fiber splitting and a fiber kinking. So. The fiber splitting, uh, it's something like this. For example, if you have a hole like this, okay, and then the fiber direction is like this, and then if you pull like this, you should expect the crack like this, right? The crack will occur like this. That is called fiber breakage. The fiber splitting means that you will also have a crack like this. So the crack will be perpendicular, uh, will be parallel to your loading direction. This phenomena is called fiber splitting. Okay, this is what we call fiber splitting. Fiber breakage is like this. This is fiber breakage. So basically, you break the fiber uh, perpendicular, right? While the fiber splitting, it's like a transverse crack because it's actually a transverse crack. It's guided by the stress here sigma 2 2 right because they will open it and also the effect of a sigma 1 1 that's why here uh the failure criteria and splitting you need to evaluate what happened to sigma 1 1 first if you have a very low sigma 1 1 from 0 to the xc xc is a fiber failure and compression then the damage will be divide uh, will be uh governed by sigma 2 that is the pressure uh in in, in these two direction, the shear, the in-plane shear, and the out-of-plane shear. And you still have the same uh, phenomena like before because it's, yeah, it's a, it's a matrix cracking like, like before, 
but instead you need to account for the effect of a sigma 1 1 okay so it's the same so in this case you have a fiber splitting but if your sigma 1 1 is too big enough means that uh, it's larger than the compression failure so what happened is usually imagine you're doing like this uh, you're doing like this what happened is that uh, for example you have like this because you have a very slender fiber when you compress you will uh, you will have something like this it's basically a, a buckling a micro buckling some people call it same right micro blocking or fiber kinking so basically the fiber inside a matrix will be like you know yeah buckle so it's a it's a compression failure so in in this model it's also the same thing so they just how to say split this into two part uh when the sigma one one is small larger uh, uh, sigma compression uh it becomes a splitting and when it's larger than the sigma compression it will cause you a kinking is a micro buckling so the same thing here the stress that you use here uh i have to say it's not the stress sigma 2 2 directly but the stress that is perpendicular to this uh, fracture uh how you call it the, the kinking plane that's why you do a transformation about the sigma uh, about psi it's called psi right psi i think yeah this this yeah psi that's why you need to do transformations so sigma ij psi represent the stress in the fiber kicking plane because uh so the idea of this guy of this model you don't use the materials uh in how to say you don't use the stresses from the material coordinate system but you use the stresses that already transform transform to the kinking plane or to the matrix cracking plane as in this matrix cracking uh, criterion so this is a lot of improvement in terms of hashing because hashing only compares the stress in the material to the each damage mode right the threshold in each damage mode while in this case no you have the phenomena first you define that you have a you know cracking plane you have a kinking plane so the stress already transformed there before you do a failure analysis so before you compare to your failure criteria you need to transform to that planes okay so the materials that you need uh for this is the same right uh so you have a xt longitudinal tensile strength xc compression tensile compressive in matrix uh, direction in the transverse direction and then you have a plane, a plane stress and the same thing transverse shear so this is basically the same data that you use in uh, in 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 hashing damage right this is exactly the same but then uh, you have additional direction for example the the fracture plane angle usually in a pure compression the, the angle is around 53 yeah, so basically uh, if you have a fiber like this, if this is 45, the the, the cracking uh ang the cracking angle is something like that. Yeah, it's a 53. So in order to evaluate the failure, you need to transform your sigma 2 2 become sigma 2 2 in the alpha plane. Okay, in the cracking plane. Uh, the same thing here. This is what I said before. It's a pressure dependent. Uh, parameters uh, they call it here the shear of friction and yeah, because because uh, due to the normal stress the friction will be uh, generated right and this is the transverse shear so here uh, if you have the data you can put it if you don't they can assume that this is function of uh, sl and yc function of a uh, shear strength and a compressive because it's related to that right so this is how you put this yeah so you, you need to create damage initiations uh criterion large zero five and this is you put all uh material parameters remember when you put material parameters one line maximum only eight parameters okay and then to, if that uh if you have more than that you need to put below okay and this is up to this moment it's not supported by abacus AE, so you need to add manually all right you need to add manually 
your criterion and in terms of uh, damage criterion uh, you can have this the lark uh, this is for the hashin right for the hashin you have hashin criteria so this is criteria for the hashin while for the lark you have this criteria so this is the output contour that you need to show when you present your stress analysis because if this value reaches one and then that mode uh, your composite fail in that mode okay and if you want to read more details, go to this paper uh, from Professor Pino, Material and Structural Response of Polymer Matrix. Fiber Reinforced Composite is the journal Composite Materials uh, published in 2012, I think, right? 2012, right? Okay. So I think it's clear enough. So now let's do it. How to do it? How to adjust our model, yesterday model, uh, to account for, for this large. So let's go. So this is the model. I will not repeat it again okay let's go to the part if you don't know how to make this please watch my video this one abacus modeling t-joint uh, adhesive bonding composite right because i'm too lazy to make a new model so i'm just using a previous model that i have and the model one if you remember yesterday video it's uh, without mass refinement model two is with re mass refinement in this case I will just copy the model 2 into model LARC. Okay, LARC 05. So I remember. So, okay, nice. Now we are already in the LARC 05. So we are going to modify this model. Okay, so we need to go to the properties. We need to see here. So actually, this is the elasticity. You still have arthrotropic elasticity. But if you go here, it only has Hashin. Maybe in 2022, 2023, Abacus will update their software. But at the moment, you, they're not supported. LARC is not supported in this model, in this CAE. So you need to add manually. So I already prepared this. So this is the... So there is a damage initiation. There is a criterion. Uh, if you're using Hashin, Abacus will use this like this. Machine. But since we are using LARC, so you need to change LARC. And this is the material parameters that I have. Uh, this is the damage evolution. We will not discuss this later. If you're interested how to discuss the damage evolution, subscribe to this channel. Next week, we're going to make a, a separate video because the, the explanation will be different. We're going to use different model. Okay, so this is the LARC. So what you need to do, so let me explain a little bit. Uh, let me copy this guy here. So if you remember, yeah. So the first one uh, is the longitudinal tensile compression. And this one is uh, transverse tensile strength. This is transverse compression. This is a uh, plane shear strength, and this one, the eighth one, is the ST. Okay, and then in between SL and ST, you have alpha zero and psi. Okay, this is not explained here. It's psi. Uh, I, I checked the documentation before, I think, but it's not here. Yeah, yeah, so this is eta L and eta zero, this is alpha and psi zero. This is LT. This is how it should be, okay? Uh, the arrangement, okay? Uh, I, okay, so now let's copy this and let's put our model how. Uh, when you don't have support in Abacus CA, you can modify directly. For example, uh, you can open the, the input file, but this is how you should do it. Uh, model. Uh, ed, uh, edit keywords, so model lark. Okay, so they will open an input file for you. This is the keywords, right? This is the node elements and something. But here, the most important part, right? So, where is the material? Here, you have the materials. So, this is important. If the star is two, it means it's comment. So, you don't care, you can put that uh, blah 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 here. It will not change anything uh, to your uh, simulation setup. 
But here, the most important one, you have a material one that only behave elastically with engineering constant here. So now what you need to do is to, to put this. You damage initiation, criterion arc, and the number here. Okay? And then this is for damage initiation. And then if you want to have fill output, because the fill output, the default is like this, the uh, logarithmic strain, plastic strain, equivalent plastic strain, magnetic plastic strain, stress, stress degradations. You want to export this failure criteria, right? Uh, where was it? So what you need to do is this guy. How did I know? It's from uh, the documentation. Uh, yeah, like that. So this is for the lark. Okay, and then you click OK. So now, finish. The same model now has failure criteria. Only failure initiation. You didn't simulate the failure itself. You didn't simulate the progression. This is not the 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 the, the how do you call it. The objective of this video. The objective of this video is to use failure initiation criteria. So when you show the result, people know the failure occurs or not. Okay. So there's nothing to change in assembly. Okay, nothing else. I think you're free to run. I think. T joint lark. Lark. This, make sure this is model lark. You press continue. You press parallelization to speed up the process. Okay. And one more thing that I want you to know is if you're interested in modeling the propagation, the damage evolution, it will not work directly. You need to combine with enrichment element like XFEM, extended finite element. So if you're interested to know how to use it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this so you will get notification next week, okay? And again, the reason why I'm making this video today is because I have training and I'm gonna teach this in my training so yeah oh see guys this is what i like teaching i get what i don't expect okay there are a few lines to this material options the independent range in ascending this error may have been caused by a possible empty line in that the car in the properties Okay, I don't know what it says, guys. Shear modulus and you're going to be positive. Okay, so it means that the way we paste the, the code was not right. So, edit keyword, uh, lark. It's okay. This happens, guy, you know. Just fix this again. Output, okay. I think. Where is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This should not have comma, I think. Yeah. Am I right? I think I was right. Let's go. Let's submit. Come on, I think this one should work. Please. Please. Yeah, it works. It's just a matter of comma. Right? Oh, not yet, not yet. Hopefully it works. Should work. So what we are doing today is just initiation. The LARC model will not affect the response. If just tell it just tell you that the stressed combination will generate this kind of a failure mode. But the failure mode do not happen and propagate, no. Uh, in Hashin, you can add a combination of damage evolution. In uh, in this model, in, in LARC, in Abacus, they don't have that yet. For a normal element, you need to use 
extended finite element. If you want to know how to implement that, we are going to check uh, next week. Yeah. So please don't forget to uh, subscribe so you can you can get notifications. Oh, nice. See, yeah, it's just a matter of comma. I forgot to delete the comma. Now it's correct. So very nice. And you cannot do hashing failure criteria like this, right? Because as I told you before, hashing in Abacus only works for plain stress element, shell elements. I don't know why. It should be easy for Abacus guy to implement the 3D version. Because many people need that, right? It's really strange because, you know, it's been like 10 years. There's no improvement in, in, in failure criteria of hashing. You can implement the 3D version, I think. Because this is very strange. In a software like Abacus, you only have one built-in, one built-in model for a composite, only one. And that one also not complete, only for a shell. That's that's a shame. That's why I'm really happy when we have this this LARC model. Uh, at least people have options, right? In LS Dyna, you have so many material cards. You have Pinel model, you have uh, Maimi model, you have uh, Pedro Camaño model, you have the Chang Chang model, Madsen Miller model. You have so many options in LS Dyna. Okay. Uh, okay, let's check the results. Not yet finished, but I think you can already check. Yeah, you see there's a stress here. But this is the misses. The misses don't tell you anything if it fails or not. For example, here, two. What was it? 230. Will there any failure? I don't know. The matrix fails at 500. But uh, no, the fiber fails at 500 MPA. The matrix fails around 30. But what does it mean? It means nothing, right? That's why you need to check this LARC uh, here. You see here, LARC failure criteria will tell you that. Okay, wait. Our criteria will tell you that at this region, your fiber kinking occurs at the top. There will be fiber kinking because this already exceeding one. And you have fiber S, fiber splitting, many fibers splitting here, especially here. Okay, there's many fibers splitting here. As you can see, all right. And if you see here, there is fiber tension. This the fiber will be tense, right? Because you are pulling here, so the upper part will be like uh, you know, this is this is positive tensile, while the lower will be uh, they call it compression. The same thing here. This is tensile. This is compression. That's why there is fiber kinking here, because in compression. And matrix, yeah, there's a little bit matrix on the, in this region, right? So this is why it is important to have a failure criteria. You sh you're, you should use this instead of using like normal stress. What did this tell you? Nothing. It didn't tell you anything. You cannot judge it if your structure good or not. Just checking this. This one is better, right? If you show the components, people can, okay, this is 247. To what they should compare? They should compare to the fiber, right? This is even better. Not even better. This, this is at least better than using von Mises because von Mises is, is meaningless when you're simulating composite. All right, guys? So this is the, yeah, this is kinking. Yeah, you have kinking because you have compression in the above and below, right? Uh, so your maximum stress here because you're crack tip here. That's why the kinking happens only here, right? And that's it. Okay, guys, uh, I think uh, it should be useful for you. Don't forget to uh, like this video if you're interested to learn, especially if you need it for your research, because I'm searching a lot in, in YouTube uh, and in, in, in open sources. 
resources in the internet. There's no one explaining how to use the Lark in the new model. They say that, oh, it's been there, but no one tells. That's why I try to read literatures because for, uh, for my training too. And I think it's useful for you. So, all right, guys. Bye.